This knowledge test question had me banging my head against the wall for a long time, and it probably drives you nuts too. Let's read. If the outside air temp increases during a flight at constant power and at constant indicated altitude, the true airspeed will. And so first, we figure out what happens to true airspeed. Higher temps cause air molecules to spread out and become more diffuse, so air density goes down. There's less drag from fewer air molecules, so if power stays constant, and that's the key here, it's a big if since leaving the throttle alone would probably reduce power, our true airspeed goes up. So that's one half of the problem. Now we have to figure out if true altitude goes up or down. True altitude is our height above sea level. Contrast that with indicated altitude, which is just what we read off the altimeter. It's also supposed to indicate our height above sea level, but it's susceptible to temperature changes. The altimeter works by sensing changes in air density. A lower density equates with a higher altitude. So many of us, me included, figured that higher temps cause lower density, which causes the altimeter to read higher. In order to keep the altimeter at a constant altitude, like the question says, we need to descend, which puts us at a lower true altitude. So we answer A here. True airspeed increases while true altitude decreases. This turns out to be wrong, but why? The reason will clue us into how altimeters really work. Let's reference a mountaintop that's at 4,000 feet above sea level. The atmosphere, as we know, is made up of air molecules, and air density can be measured by the weight of a column of air above a measuring device like an altimeter. Sea level pressure is the result of all of the air molecules in the column pushing down on this point. So when we're on the ground at sea level, and we set our altimeter to the reported sea level pressure, it interprets correctly that we're at zero MSL. As we climb, there are fewer and fewer air molecules above the aircraft, so the altimeter registers a higher altitude. When we get level with the mountaintop, a true altitude of 4,000 feet, the lower mass of air molecules above the aircraft causes the altimeter to register 4,000 feet, again, correctly. In order to function like this, the altimeter is making a very big assumption about the atmosphere, specifically that the drop-off in air molecules, or the lapse rate, is predictable. It's based on the temperature being standard, meaning 15 degrees Celsius at sea level, and decreasing by about 2 degrees with each 1,000 feet gained. Of course, this isn't always the case. When the temperature is colder than standard, that column of air becomes more condensed. It's important to note that this doesn't change sea level pressure. There's still the same mass of air above us, so a properly set altimeter will read 0 MSL. But when we climb, we get to a true altitude of 4,000 again, but with fewer air molecules now above us than when we were at standard, the altimeter thinks we're higher up in thinner air, even if it's set to the correct altimeter setting. Now, if we're going to maintain a constant 4,000 indicated altitude, we would have to descend, putting us at greater risk of impacting terrain. This is why we say high to low look out below. Going into colder temperatures puts us at risk of terrain if we keep our altimeter at the same indication. Now, these are extreme examples, and most of the time, following maximum elevation figures and other minimum altitudes provides us more than enough buffer for these temp errors, but it's an illustration of how the altimeter works. So what happens when we're in warmer than standard temps, like it said in the test question? We climb to a true altitude of 4,000, but now, with more air molecules above us, denser air, the altimeter thinks we're lower. So to maintain 4,000 on the altimeter, we climb. Our true altitude increases. This is why the answer to this problem is that true altitude increases. This is a counterintuitive concept, and I often forget the principle behind this relationship, so it's best to just apply the high to low look out below memory aid that works so well for pressure changes to temperature changes as well. Hopefully this will help you with your knowledge tests and with your general understanding of altimetry. If you like learning with us, consider Flight Insight Ground School, like Private, IFR, or any of our other eight courses, which you can check out at the link here or in the description below.